Today I'm going to a place in Southern California, North Hollywood. Let's turn this north. And the place that I'm going to is this location right here. This building right here, this is a Bank of America. And the date was February 28th, 1997, where two men, a guy by the name of Larry Phillips Jr. and a guy by the name of Emil Matasarenu. His first name is spelled E-M-I-L. I'm calling it, it could be Emil or Emil. I'm just calling him Emil. They were two bank robbers who showed up to this Bank of America here with several machine guns, several pistols, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and homemade body armor. They walked in, actually they parked right here in the second parking space. And back in 1997, these parking spaces did not come straight in like you see them here. They were actually more at an angle like what you see over here. So it was the second parking space, which would have been roughly right about in here at an angle. They parked right there put on ski masks, had their body armor walked in fully loaded with machine guns, ammo. They gave themselves eight minutes. It would take eight minutes for the police to get there once the armed robbery started. So they actually stitched a stopwatch or, or digital clocks into the back of their gloves so they could see they had only eight minutes. Now as they came around and walked down through here and entered the door right in here, they were not anticipating a police car with two officers in it driving south on Laurel Canyon watched them walk into the bank. They immediately radioed saying that they think there's a 211 in progress. A 211 is an armed robbery. Called for backup and about seven and a half minutes later when the two armed robbers came out there was a massive shootout that lasted a total of 44 minutes. Now I'm going to go down to street level here. And as you can see, they would have parked right over in here, walked around down this walkway, walked into these front doors here, and the police vehicle would have driven by, heading south, and watched them walk in. Now, as a result of that, they put police cars up on this intersection. There were police units over here in the parking lot or police units down here and there were some police units in this south parking lot right here and one of what ended up happening is when the two armed robbers came out of the bank there was a gun battle that began right here at the front of the bank both robbers began firing at the police officers shooting at anything that moved full automatic weapons and the police had their nine millimeter pistols there was there were no match for these weapons and these guys had body armor the police were shooting these guys, the bullets were bouncing off their body, was not phasing them. So it was looking pretty bad for the police. But it started right here, and I'm going to exit street view. Now after about a little over 40 minutes, the two armed robbers made their way around the corner here to their parked car, and they were going to try to get away. So what they did was, they got into the car, or Emil... Matasarenu got into the driver's seat. Larry Phillips stood over here and was firing at police officers. Emil Matasarenu was driving the car. And off to the left here, you're going to see Larry Phillips shooting at police officers at the intersection and anywhere else he sees police officers. He's also shooting at civilians. There was a police car parked right about in here that got shot up. There was a police car here that got shot up. There was another one right here that was shot up. And then there was one over here. Now, the one that was right here that got shot up had a civilian, a couple of, I think, at least one civilian hiding behind it that also was shot by these guys because they were shooting anybody and everything indiscriminately. They didn't care. Now, here's the intersection. You see the three police cars. This police car here has a civilian laying there who's shot up at least one, maybe two civilians, because like I said, he was shooting everybody. He didn't care. These were two evil, evil guys. 
the car started to drive. Larry Phillips was going to get in the car, but they kept shooting at him. So Emil Montessorenu started driving the car through the parking lot in this direction from here to here. And Larry Phillips walked alongside it, shooting over the top of it, providing cover fire and actually more like suppression fire. He was going to get into the car and decided it would be better if he walked alongside it, laying down suppression fire, so they would have a better chance of getting away. Eventually, the car made it out of the parking lot and started heading east on this street here called Archwood Street. And around that same time, Larry Phillips made his way around through here made a right turn on the sidewalk and started heading down in this direction. Here he comes out around the corner, fires at officers, runs down this dirt path, which is a sidewalk today, but back then it was a dirt path. And there he is hiding at the back of the truck as Emil Montessorenu gets shot at by the police officers over here, hiding behind these vehicles. Now, there were several police officers hiding over here behind a vehicle. So when Larry Phillips Jr. ended up walking in this direction, they started firing at him. He started firing back. One of the police officers struck him in the hand. He dropped his gun. He picked it up, put it under his chin, pulled the trigger, and committed suicide and fell over roughly somewhere in this general area right here. So you're going to see Larry Phillips come walking out right here down the dirt path. He's firing at the police officers across the street. They fire back at him. They shoot him in the right hand. He drops his gun right here, and he bends over, picks it up, puts it under his chin, and pulls the trigger. Drops. And then if you look up here, You'll see dust hitting the ground because the police officers continue to shoot at him. And shortly after that, you'll see right here he gets hit again. And I believe that was the one that severed his spine. They just wanted to make sure he was dead. And it was done by these off three officers right up here. And I believe it was this officer here that, that got that last hit on him. Emil Montessoreno eventually made it to this T intersection right here, where this road runs into Archwood Street. And there was a huge gun battle. I'm going to straighten this out a little. So there was a huge gun battle. This is Archwood here. And what happened is Emil Montessorenu was looking for another car to carjack because his car was damaged. The getaway car was damaged. He pulled up over here. He shot at a guy driving a Jeep truck. That guy stopped right about in here. Ammo pulled up alongside, started transferring cash and weapons into the truck. He got into the truck, and about that time, an LAPD car came driving down the street rapidly with three SWAT men. They thought the driver of the truck was the was 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 an in, innocent victim until they realized it was the gunman. So, Emil's getaway car was parked here. The truck was parked here, and the LAPD vehicle pulled up on this side and they had a huge gun battle taking place right in here. You can see he shoots out the front of his car right about here. You can see that he ended up actually hitting the driver of this truck, didn't seriously wound him, but he wounded him. The driver gets out, takes off running down the street and around the corner. Then he rolls up alongside and starts transferring weapons and money into this truck. and. and plans on using this truck as a new getaway vehicle. So he gets into the truck, shuts it, and that's when the other police car comes driving up thinking that this is a victim. And when they realize he is the actual suspect, suspect jumps out of the truck here. Here comes the police car. And then they start firing out of the window right there at the suspect. So this officer lays down on the ground and fires underneath the vehicles and strikes him in the left thigh twice. As a result of that, he has an involuntary reaction and pulls the trigger of his weapon and shoots the curb right over here. 
and you'll see that coming up in just a second. Right there, you saw the dust from the concrete fly up. And that's pretty much when he surrenders right there. When we go down to street view, you can actually see on this Google Earth picture, you can still see the impact crater right there, right here. Now, I'm going to back up a little, right about here. So the police officers were parked here. The getaway, the truck that he was trying to get away when it was parked here, get away in was parked here. And his original getaway car was parked right about here. He was right in front of it. That's when he surrendered. The police officers come around, handcuff him. He was bleeding out of his thigh. They did not get medical attention to him right away because they thought it was still an active uh, shooting scene. They, they thought they heard there were only two shooters, but they thought there were as many as five. As a result of that, the ambulance was not allowed to come down or would not go down until they got it clear that it was safe to go down. And in that 40 or 45 minutes of waiting for an ambulance, Mata Serena bled out and died right here on the street in this area. Here's the bank. It started in here. They came out around. A 44-minute gun battle erupted. And say about 40 minutes of it was here and here. Most of it out the front of the bank. Several minutes of it was from here as they made their way out down Archwood. Right in here, Larry Phillips committed suicide. And down here in front of this driveway, right here, is where Emil Matasarenu fought it out. Had a, a huge gun battle right here in this neighborhood with three SWAT police officers. They eventually shot him, subdued him. He bled to death right here. And that was known as the North Hollywood shootout. They didn't call it a massacre because the two bank robbers didn't shoot or kill anybody. They didn't massacre anybody. And fortunately, the only people that died as a result of that were the two armed robbers. Nobody else died. There was a police officer who was severely wounded, but he ended up making a full recovery. So there you have it. The location and route of the North Hollywood shootout that took place February 28th, 1997 from Google Earth. So here I am across the street from the Bank of America where the North Hollywood shootout took place. The bank robbers parked right over here and then they walked right in this door and while they were walking up to this door a police car went by and spotted them and realized there was a 211 in progress. So here it is right here. They went into this one Shot it up, came out, got into the vehicle right over here, and started out this way. So they came down through here together, one in the car, one walking, right through this area, right here. The guy that was walking went around the bush and around the corner, the car went around the corner, and the police officer was sitting right here, and that car got shot up. Now the guy in the car, kept going down the road and the guy walking with the gun came down through here like this and there was also a big truck right in here where this big truck is and he made it through here and at that time of course there was not a sidewalk it was all dirt and there was some shrubbery coming over this fence but when he got to this corner right about here the police fired at him from across the street from about right over in here and that's where he kind of ducked in right here and it was roughly right about this spot here where he shot himself so this is the actual location where it happened right about in here and you can see over there where the police officers were now when he was shot his buddy was was down the road over here so right here is the location where the car came down he stopped that truck right in here and then he hit over on this side of the car as the police pulled up over on this side and they had the big shootout right here and you can see this patch of concrete new patch of concrete where one of his bullets struck the curb but they replaced it however on google earth you can see 
at the impact crater is still there, but this is where one of his bullets struck the curb right here. So from here to about here, and that would be the location right about there where he was shot and pretty much died. He bled to death because they couldn't get an ambulance to him. They weren't sure how many more shooters there were. So they let him sit there. He uh, bled to death. His mother got really upset and then tried suing because they didn't get him medical attention quick enough.